So let's start getting into the meat of the spreadsheet now. Now to give you a general sense of how the spreadsheet works, basically is based on orders from customers from a set of given crops. The crop planner generates soaking, sowing, uncovering, and harvesting tasks for you to perform. While doing that, it records all this information and gives you summaries of all that production. So you might want to go back and listen to that a few times to get a real sense of all the things that come together, but basically it's customers, crops, orders, and tasks. That is a, what we are looking at at a base level with this spreadsheet. So let's start, start with customers. When we talk about customers, we're talking about anybody you're selling microgreens to. That could be a grocer, a restaurant, a, a private customer, a CSA, a corner store, or a farmer's market. Previously, I left customers and farmers markets separately. Here, they're in one sheet. Your customers must be in this sheet in order to place an order for them. You cannot place an order for a customer that does not exist. So a lot of things in here are fairly obvious, okay? Uh, let's start here, the active. So active means uh, if something's active, it means you can uh, it's someone you're selling to, and you can filter by this. So if I only want to see folks that are active, I can reduce the uh, what I see on the screen there. And that's one of the main goals of this new version is to show you only what you need to see on the screen if that's possible. This is the challenge with spreadsheets is there's always way more information than you need. Uh, the next thing is the type of customer. This just allows you to break things down by restaurants, grocers, markets, things like that. So that's a very helpful uh, sense of where your sales are going. The next is the, your customer name. This is pretty obvious as well. One thing I want to point out here though is what I call the buffer customer. And this is essentially you. Once you have all your orders in, you know, your restaurants, your grocers, your markets, the crop planner is going to tell you you need to sow this many trays of these crops. And if you want a little bit more, you need to create an order for that. And But what you're basically going to do is use the buffer order. Now, if you want to change that to your business name or just extra or samples, you go ahead and you can create as many of these sort of extra customers as you want. But basically, I might create a buffer and to say, you know, I'm going to do, you know, two large sunflower and two large pea extra because I'm a little worried about the weather and those crops suffer in the weather, something like that. So it just gives you some extra crop to work with. Maybe you want more for eating on your own. Maybe you want more for samples. Uh, maybe you just want to have a buffer because you're learning production and producing more than you need. It's way better than producing less than you need. Uh, if you produce more, you can probably find a market for it or you can consume it. Um, but if you don't produce enough to meet your orders, you are losing sales. And that hits you harder than producing extra crop, which doesn't cost that much on a, a per crop basis to produce. So. Um, yeah, that's just basically how that's going to work is you've got a buffer in there to add extra numbers of crops if you need them. The next thing is route. And so the route is if you have multiple delivery routes for your products, one going east and one going west and whatever, you can give those routes a name. And then in your, uh, your um, packaging sheet, which we'll look at later, um, it'll, it'll lay those out for you. So customers, routes, and then everything that's going to that customer is laid out makes it much easier for planning. Most of this other stuff is just the information about the customers you're going to put in, including uh, the pricing. Now we're going to talk more about pricing in the crop section, but you might have different pricing for different customers. And so as much as I really recommend standardized pricing, the reality is, is some people you're going to give a little bit of a better price to, and some people you might charge a little more, maybe because they're further away and you're building the delivery into the price. So you can just make a record of that here. This doesn't feed into anything else, whereas the client name and the route do. So these are kind of required uh, if you want to use them elsewhere. What is useful here and um, does factor into calculations is the start and end dates of your farmer's markets. So here I've just put a few samples in here. One of these is a year-round market that goes for 49 weeks, and one of them is a summer market that just goes for 17 weeks. Here I've put in my weekly farmer's market fees. And so up here at the top, it tells me right away what my farmer's market fees are for the year. So this is already really useful information. And I know some of you are looking at this going, oh, never thought about that. That's a lot of money. 
yeah, you can spend a lot of money at farmer's markets. So that's an expense people often forget about. And it's one of those things that other microgreens, uh, you know, tutorials and training things often fail to mention. So this value here is going to get transferred over to our overhead costs sheet, which is where we put all the sort of non-direct production related costs. And there's a lot of them. So that's the customer sheet. Again, you're basically putting in your customer and the route. And those things are going to feed into our order sheet and uh, into our packaging sheet and make, uh, make that all a lot easier. So from here, we're going to go from customers to take a look at the next thing we need to, to make an order is our crops.